So I'm in Bucharest, Romania, right? And I'm doing commentary for this new kickboxing promotion called Coliseum Tournament. And it's an awesome show. I mean, literally, every single fight from beginning to end had something exciting about it, something incredible about it. it there was either a ton of blood and the referee had to stop it, uh, or it was some kind of a vicious knockout, or the guys were just standing in front of each other, just trading punches, or it was some kind of controversy. And the main event was no exception. In fact, the main event was the most controversial fight of the night. Now, Bogdan Stoika is fighting in the main event. And that's a name that carries a lot of weight in Romania. I mean, it's, it's a name that carries a lot of weight all around the world. Now, I can guarantee that almost all of those 5,000 fans that were in attendance in this nearly sold out arena probably came to see Bogdan Stoika and a lot of other fighters uh, on the card. Bogdan uh, is one of the most recognizable names in Romanian kickboxing and he's fighting in the main event. This is the fight they've all been waiting for. He finally comes out to the ring and he's fighting a guy, a Turkish guy, and forgive me if I butcher his name here, Fatih Mehmet Karakus. And when the fight starts, um, they just kind of, you know, it doesn't look like they're hitting each other like hard at all, you know? It's even less than sparring, you know? It, it's so weak, these punches and kicks that they're throwing at each other. It's sort of like what you would do with, with your friend when you're just kind of, you know, messing around. You know, your friend comes over, you just throw a few punches at him, whatever. And like, they're making contact, but you can tell that they're not, they're going like 10%. Now, my immediate reaction was, this is a fake fight. Like I, I don't, I don't know what the hell is is going on here. But they're they're not fighting. It's like it's really obvious that they're not trying to injure their opponent. Now I didn't want to say that on the microphone live because I mean that's a pretty bold statement to make. First of all, and if you're not exactly sure, uh, maybe you'd better hold your tongue, especially if you're on live worldwide television. But the crowd pretty much, you know, did the talking for me. I mean, they start whistling and booing and hissing. People are standing up. And you can feel that the atmosphere in the arena is really starting to get nasty right now. I mean, I I've heard stories from old-time uh, pro wrestlers who've told me that, like, back in the day, you know, in the, in the 60s and the 70s, uh, even into the early 80s, that the fans, when they got mad... They would riot and sometimes, you know, they would try to kill the wrestlers and like they'd have to wait in the building backstage for like hours because the fans were outside. They wanted to kill these guys. And that's what's going through my mind when I see this happening. I'm like, oh my God, there could be a riot. Things could start getting thrown towards the ring and I'd better, you know, be careful here. And then, so this goes on for, I don't know, about like 30 seconds or so. These guys like fighting, but barely even touching each other. Um, and it's clear that they're both doing this. It's not like one guy uh, is kind of just lightly, you know, pitter-pattering his, his opponent. It's like they're both doing this, right? And then eventually, like, the Turkish guy's like, yep, I've had enough. Uh, and the referee steps in and he calls the fight. And the crowd goes nuts, starts booing and hissing again. And you can feel this, uh, you know, atmosphere really starting to get tense and nervous. Uh, and then the promoter steps into the ring and he grabs the microphone. He starts saying something in Romanian to the crowd uh, and they're booing him and hissing at him and uh, starts talking to them. And he, he's, he, I don't know, I have no idea what he's saying at this point. I think uh, on commentary, I was saying something like, well, I, I, I don't know, I can't really think of a reason why he would do this. Maybe he's injured, uh, or maybe there's some other reason why he cannot fight, but maybe he just wanted to come to the ring anyway uh, and just kind of step into the ring uh, and, and show that, like, look, I, I did come here to fight, but something happened, uh, and it's, you know, in the end, it can't go down. So anyway, uh, the promoter starts talking to the crowd. Uh, and they just kind of quiet down and they listen to him and he explains the situation and then it just gets silent and they start listening to him very carefully and then the crowd starts to turn and they, they, they feel relieved and they start clapping and they start cheering and I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? And then the judge, uh, one of the judges who's sitting next to me at ringside leans over and says, hey, this guy, uh, he said that this guy's father just died 
just a few hours ago before the fight. And I'm like, oh my God, man. Like, so, you know, I think all those fans who were booing and, and were re really mad were kind of like, oh, gee, well, why didn't you just tell us, you know, because look, we, we, we saw what was happening in the, in the ring and, uh, yeah. And so after that, you know, I think the crowd could really, you know, respect this guy because even though literally like when he got to the arena, probably, probably about the time when he was arriving at the arena to get his hands taped, you know, and, and to, you know, do kind of walkthroughs of the entrances and things of that nature, he was informed that his father had died. And, um, you know, you got to respect the guy for at least getting in the ring uh, and and wanting to do, you know, something, right? But uh, I'll tell you what, I mean, when I heard that, when, when he told me that the guy's father had died, the first thing that went through my mind, and I'm kind of ashamed, you know, to even say this, was that like, you know, yeah, right, you know, <laughs> because look, to be honest, and I don't mean any disrespect to this guy, uh, but if I had to fight Bogdan Stoika, I might think of an excuse why not to fight him as well. You know, I mean, Bogdan Stoika has fought all over the world. He's fought in glory. Uh, he's fought in China. He's fought for super combat. Uh, and he's a really, really top level fighter. And before this uh, card, I'd never heard of Fatih Mehmet Karakus. Uh, and I, I really, I had trouble finding any of his fights on YouTube. Uh, and he's not a very well-known fighter. I guess he's got a pretty good record. He was something like 10 and 1. But I had certainly never seen him fight or even heard of him. And so I thought, well, maybe this guy's just, you know, chickening out at the last minute, right? But uh, after the show, I, I, I went up to the guy. And I shook his hand and I said, look, uh, big respect to you for, you know, for stepping into the ring uh, and, and, and for doing this. I can I can sort of relate to what you're going through right now uh, because I also lost a parent uh, when I was a teenager. And so, look, man, um, it's going to be hard uh, and you're going to have a long road to go, but things... Uh, will get better eventually. So I just, you know, I wish you the best of luck. Um, and I, I hope, you know, I just want to wish you and your family, you know, all the best. And when I said that to him, um, he just, you know, he, I, w I was shaking hands with him and kind of talking to him at the same time. And I could feel him just squeeze my hand, you know, stronger and stronger as I was, I was, as I was saying that to him. And I could see the look on his face um, when I said that. And I think that told me right there that what what this guy said was was the truth. And that, um, man, I just I wish the guy all the best because I know it's it's going to be really, really rough uh, for the, for him. He, he was a young man. He looked like he was probably in his early 20s, mid 20s uh, at the latest. And it's it's never a good time, you know, to to lose your father. Uh, but I can't imagine it happening um, literally just a few hours before you're supposed to fight uh, one of the most dangerous kickboxers in Europe. So uh, I, I can imagine that there were probably a lot of disappointed fans uh, in the audience and watching on television at home. But I think that everybody should be able to understand what happened uh, and, and respect Fatih's uh, decision not to fight. I did see Andrzej Stoika after the show, and I, I did have a short interview with him, and uh, this is what he had to say uh, about what happened. Uh, hello, first of all. You know, it's a situation that uh, I hope I will never get through this, ever in my life. So I understand the Turkish fighter, you know. I'm fortunate for, the, for, for all the fans who wanted to see the, this fight, because Bogdan is an incredible fighter and a spectacular one. But uh, I'm sure uh, next time it will be a great event. Uh, in, in many promotions, uh, s some unfortunate uh, uh, situation like that uh, happened many times. So we don't, uh, ha we don't have to judge anyone. Do you think that there's going to be a rematch uh, soon between these two or does Bogdan just move on to the next thing? Um, I don't know. I hope I, I hope I will see a fight between them because the Turkish fighter is a very good one. So I hope I will see that fight. Uh, what did it look like uh, before the fight with your preparation with Bogdan? Did he look like he was in good shape for this fight and he was ready to go? 
Bogdan, uh, he's, he, he's always ready for any fight, uh, any upcoming fight, so he, he was very good, yeah. He was very prepared, very focused, so I'm so sorry. What about you? When can we expect to see you in the ring again? Uh, I'm gonna fight in uh, Holland, Almir. You know, uh, uh, when uh, Melvin, uh, Melvin Manhoff will have a fight with uh, Remy Borniaski in 29 October. Uh, his last kickboxing fight and there will be a core main event there. Uh, I will have a great fight with Sahak Mark Parian. I hardly wait for it. <laughs>